Hello. <laughs> what I'm so sorry. sorry. I watch a movie. I'm sorry. I'm watching a movie. <laughs> oh, all right. Now we so got funny. it. All right. All right. All right. Now it's time for the class, guys. Well, I was... hey, Karen, Henry said, what movie? <laughs> can't afford that but i love it <laughs> all right well henry i'm so sorry i didn't get did you get which one was it sorry did you get what movie no i i i question for Ka for karen what movie is he that's it is she oh. watching mm -hmm. Is the second part, but it's a fun. It's about witches, but uh, witch. witches, witches. <laughs> witches, witches. All right, okay, guys. Well, maybe it's because of the date or the time, right? The month. Uh huh. <laughs> okay, guys. So now we are going to start the class by calling the attendance. So please, everybody, get ready. Turn your cameras on, and remember that when I call your name is a requirement to say present, all right? Andrea Sofia Benitez Gomez. Present teacher. Blanca Alejandra Portillo Bermúdez. Present teacher. Carlos Ernesto Pérez. Carlos Roberto Alemán Prudencio. He said he's writing. Did he write, did he, I'm sorry, did he write a, a message or? He wrote in the group that he is driving. He has a motorcycle. Oh, all right, all right. But he's, uh, is he connected? Just let me check. Oh, okay, still on the road. Oh, yes. All right. Uh, Claudia Yamilet Coreas. I am here, teacher. All right. Ah, party there. Ellen Nilsson yes. Aparicio del Cid. And teacher. Okay. Eric Jose Hernandez Campos. Hazel Elizabeth Navarro de Cervellón. All right, Hazel. Henry Alberto Perez Rosales. Present teacher. Hernan Antonio Chacón López. Present teacher. Good evening. Juan Okay, good evening, Juan Francisco Salmeron Alas. I know you are there. All right. Karen Yamilet Rivas de Ayala. <laughs> You're muted. Yeah, uh, I'm so okay. sorry. Okay. <laughs> Magdiel Garcia Morales. Present teacher, good evening. Uh, hello, good evening. Rafael Alexander Serna Diaz. Present teacher. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Rafael Antonio Barrera Díaz. Uh, Ricardo Tony Mendoza Castro. Present teacher. Okay. Rosa del Carmen Santa Maria Tobar. She said she was going to stay as a listener. Uh, all right. There you are. Thank you, Rosa. Uh, Wilber Alberto Perez Mendez. Okay. Jose Abel Isaguirre Mendoza. Your present teacher. 
Pedro Alexander Osorto Sanchez. Present teacher. Okay, guys. Today is going to be a very interesting teacher. day. Hello, tell me, Carlos Ernesto. Yes, welcome. Present. All Thank right. You. Just let, let me. Good evening. Uh, check you in, right? Just give me one second. All right, here you are. Good. I see Rafael too, right? Okay, here we go. Hello, teacher. Good night. Hi, good evening. Yes. Welcome. I am present. I, I am in the, my work. Okay. Oh, really? All right. All right. Yeah. Okay, people. So let's go. I mean, let's start by. Uh, well, we have some things to go through tonight, and it's going to be a very interesting um, day, right? It's going to be an interesting day. Just let me check one thing here. Just one, one second. Thing is that I had everything ready, but uh, suddenly my internet internet connection went down. So I'm still opening these files, but I think we are okay. One Okay, guys, here it is. So um, we were taking some idioms, right? Remember, remember what we were, I mean, in the last class, we were talking about how to use idioms. Do you remember that? Yes, teacher. All right, all right. A ver, quiero verlos a todos los que estén presentes. Si pueden encender su cámara un momentito. Quiero ver quiénes van a estar participando, por favor. All right. Mm -hmm. Good. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be kind of difficult, this uh, dynamic that I want to do, but we'll, we're going to try, okay? We're going to try this, all right? When I say, then you repeat, all right? You repeat. Mm -hmm. Now, I say boom, chicka boom, everybody. Boom, mm -hmm. chicka boom. I say boom, chicka boom. Everybody doing what I'm doing. I say boom, chicka raka, chicka raka, chicka boom. I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, 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 yay. One more time, Ricardo's time. All right, now you do a movement, all right, and lead it, okay? Y ahora usted lo dirige. I say boom, chica, boom, all right? A ver, Ricardo. Yes, it's your turn. Usted lo dirige ahorita, uh, pero con un movimiento y todos lo vamos a seguir, all right? Mm -hmm. I say boom, chica, boom. 
<laughs> I say boom, tick, boom. Everybody doing what Ricardo is doing, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Again. I say boom, chicka boom. I say boom, chicka boom. Excellent. Uh -huh. <laughs> I say boom, chicka raka, chicka raka, chicka boom. Because you were doing this movement, that is why I'm doing, all right? Bye. La idea es que todos hagan lo que el que va a dirigirlo hace, all right? I will start over. Voy a empezar otra vez, pero ustedes repitiendo, ¿ok? Bye. Pero quiero verlos moverse como, como la teacher se va a mover ahorita, ¿ok? All right. Then, I say boom, chica boom. Everybody, repeating. Todos tienen que decir, I say boom, chica boom. All right? While you're dancing, teacher. Yes, while you're dancing, then you say, I say boom, chica boom, right? Everybody, I say boom, chica boom. Repeat. I say boom, chica boom. Yes, I say boom, chica raka, chica raka, chica boom. I say raka, chica, chica. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! All right. I boom, chica, raka, chica. Yes, yes, go ahead. Chica, raka, chica, boom. All right. Uh huh. All right. Everybody. All right. All right. All right. Oh, yay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Henry's time. Henry, come on. Henry's time. Religion forbids me. <laughs> Oh, no, I can't believe that. The religion no. for me is I can do, I can do, sorry. You can help it, right? You can help I it. Have, oh I my have, God, I you're so two, funny. Two left, two left feet. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay, this is exactly okay. what you have to do to speak English, all right? You don't have to be ashamed, all right? You don't have to be ashamed to speak English, all right? Entonces, nunca ustedes tienen que tener pena para hablar el inglés, ¿ok? Y lo que deben hacer, el ejercicio mejor que pueden hacer es imitar. ¿Verdad que muchos nunca habían oído eso? O si lo habían oído, tal vez en los niños, ¿verdad? O en los jóvenes. Pero... En la película, se me hizo familiar en la película de la máscara. Ah, all right. Ah, chica boom, boom. Yeah, all right. Uh -huh. so that's kind of... Chica boom, chica boom. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes, you're right. Bien, esta es una, es una forma de jugar, ¿verdad? Este, la idea es que imitemos el sonido. El sonido es así, miren. Chi, um, I'm sorry. Boom, chica boom. Así, fácil. Boom, chica boom. Boom, chica boom. Ajá. Y de ahí, boom, chica raca, chica raca, chica boom. All right. Boom, chica, raca, chica, raca, chica, boom. Con ritmo, ¿eh? Y la idea boom, ajá, es que cuando yo digo el nombre de alguien, hace un movimiento que todos vamos a imitar, ¿ok? Y va a ir dirigiendo, ¿ok? Ustedes repiten. Lo vamos a hacer una vez nada más, ¿ok? Vamos sin decir el nombre de alguien. Pero quiero verlos a ustedes moviéndose. Everybody, please. Imitating, imitando. Sin ninguna pena, ¿ok? I say boom, chica boom. I say chica boom. I say boom, chica boom. I say boom, chica boom. I say boom, chica raca, chica raca, chica boom. I say boom, chica raca, chica raca, chica boom. It's okay. It's okay. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Blank is time. <laughs> I say boom, chica, boom. I say boom, chica, boom. I say boom, chica, raca, chica, raca, chica, boom. I say boom, chica, raca, chica, raca, chica, boom. Everybody, come on. Mm -hmm. Every time. Every time. All right, my religion. I say boom, chica, raka, chica, boom. I say boom, chica, raka, chica, room, chica, raka, chica, boom. <laughs> All right, nice, nice. Así, no tengamos pena de imitar. 
viene un poquito más cargadito ahorita un tema en el que a ustedes les va a tocar investigar un poquito. Ok, ahora su diccionario debe ser su herramienta, ¿verdad? No de translating, no translating, but looking for the meaning, looking up the meaning um, of these phrases. Remember, we were studying idioms. Those are phrases proper from the English language or the English culture, all right? This is culture. Maybe what it means, I mean, what it means for them, it's not the same meaning for us as Latin American people or Salvadoran people, all right? Maybe for us, it doesn't make sense because the meaning is not literal, all right? El significado de una frase, de un idiom, no son las palabras que están ahí. Ok, es una frase completa con palabras que para nosotros probablemente no hagan un sentido, pero culturalmente tienen un significado diferente. Ok, entonces vamos a irnos ahí en el manual. Tenemos un ejercicio que debemos terminar. On page 34. Page 34. So here we are. Um, can you please read over here, um, Karen? Okay. All right. Idioms are words or phrases which mean something different from their literal meaning. For example, to be up with one's ears in work means to have a lot of work. All right. Uh -huh. Porque si aquí dijéramos el significado literal, es como que nos, que paramos, nos paramos sobre nuestra oreja o algo así, ¿verdad? Pero para nosotros eh, tenemos otro que se parece parar la oreja, pero no significa to have a lot of work, no, no significa tener mucho trabajo, ¿verdad? Sino que significa estar de, o ponerse atento, o estar de metido, ¿verdad? Una de dos, ajá. Entonces, eh, a eso me refiero, no es un significado literal, it's not a literal meaning, but a cultural meaning, all right? It's a cultural meaning. So let's look at this example. It says to be up in one's ears in work means to have a lot of work. All right. Now let's look at these examples that we used in the last conversation. As sick as a dog. Do you remember what this, what this idiom mean, means? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. The stomach cake. Uh... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, to be bad, to feel bad from your stomach, all right? Maybe your stomach is mm, feeling unwell, right? Or maybe you are with those two symptoms, right? From your stomach, up and down, right? <laughs> so, yes. Number two, it says under the weather, under the weather, remember? Mm -hmm. Under the weather. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what does it mean? What does it mean? Bajo de agua. Nope. Este no es agua. Miren, este es el clima, ¿verdad? Pero no tiene nada mm -hmm. que ver con el clima literalmente. All mm -hmm. right. Esto quiere decir know. under the weather. Mm -hmm. Tell me, Wilber. Mm -hmm. eh, según recuerdo que era más o menos similar como que como que a él también le ha pagado le ha pegado la enfermedad eh, sí sí ponemos este to aquí verdad ese significa también y es un significado literal de esta palabra pero under the weather solo under the weather como lloviendo sobre mojado uh, no 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 that's different that's different under bueno, the weather is when you are having some symptoms and you don't know what 
illness um it's attacking your body right or what are you getting uh maybe you just have a runny nose or a headache and you feel down right down so all you want to do is to lay down right or to go to rest and um you don't know what exactly you have but you feel not well all right you feel not well and you have some symptoms similar to have a cold similar to have a cold all right casi todas las enfermedades comienzan como empieza una gripe se han fijado verdad que se empieza a sentir mal uno que el dolor de cuerpo el malestar general que los ojos siente cansancio okay so that's under the weather. That's under the weather, all right? There's something going around. There's something going around. Do you remember what is that? When everybody is sick. Yes, maybe a virus is contagion people, right? And a very contagious, bacteria is mm, getting people sick around a place maybe our workplace our home our family and it's a group of people who is getting sick all right so that is uh there's something going around everybody's getting sick uh from the same symptoms right they are showing the same symptoms. Number four, my stomach is killing me. Killing me can be for anything. Uh, can be for any pain. It can be for any ache. It can be for a person yet, right? So for example, you're killing me, right? You are killing me. It means, mm, estoy harto, ¿verdad? Yeah. Ya me tenés harto, all right? Pero en este caso, my stomach is killing me is that you are suffering a very uh, severe pain, all right? So number five, take it easy, take it easy. It's like, yes, mm -hmm. like calm down, right? Calm down. Uh, it's not a problem, everything is okay, or it's going to get better, right? So take it easy, be patient, right? Don't worry, so take it easy. Don't do uh, what you're not supposed to do when you are sick, all right? Number six, can afford to, can afford to, is this un idiom que se utiliza no solamente con ese, esa eh, partícula to, sino que también con can afford, ¿verdad? Eh, que lo que significa realmente es que no me puedo dar el lujo de, ¿ok? I can afford to be sick. I have a lot of work to do, so I cannot afford to be sick, all right? Can afford, can afford. No me puedo dar el lujo, okay, of losing time also, right? Uh, number seven, call in sick, call in sick. Call in sick is when you call your job and report that you are sick, all right? You are reporting your work absence or giving the reason why you are not attending work, all right? Calling sick. Uh, number eight, tip top shape. Do you remember tip top shape? Do you remember tip top, tip -top shape? Eh, la mejor forma, uh, más o menos. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. I'm great, right? Es I'm not sick. Para sentirse mejor. O bien. Uh, no, tip top shape is. Uh, that you are uh, better than the best, all right? You are doing great. You are not sick anymore. You are not sick anymore, and now you are okay, all right? 
Now let's go to the to those uh, sentences, all right? And it says match the meanings with the idioms in part four. Then we have to compare, but we are going to do it uh, together, all right? Number one, it say it says, my stomach hurts badly. Aha, con cuál sería de los que están arriba? My stomach is killing me. All right, my stomach is killing me. So number one goes with number four. All right, to be very sick, to be very sick. Mm -hmm. To be very sick. Number one. Number one, correct. Number three, to relax, yes. to rest. Number three. Take it easy. All right, very good, take it easy. Number four, not feeling well, not feeling well. Falling sick. All right, mm -hmm. calling sick. Well, that's when you report, right? Mm -hmm. But no. No, not feeling well is the famous phrase under the weather, all right? Under the weather. That's not feeling well. And you have those symptoms that are annoying, right? Number five, in great condition, in great condition. Uh, number eight. Number eight, shape. yes. Number eight, tip top shape, good. Number six, don't have time to. Can afford? Yes, to. can afford, can afford. Because in the literal meaning, it's about money, but you don't have the budget enough to acquire something. That's in the literal, literal meaning. But in the idiomatic meaning is don't have, don't have time to do something, right? Don't have time to, so it's can't afford. So number six goes with number six. All right, number seven. Many, many people have the same thing. There is something going, going around. Excellent, very good. This is number three, right? Number three. All right, number eight. Calling sick. Yes, to calling phone. sick. All right. Office, say you are. Yes, very good. All right. So number one was hmm, my stomach. Oh, he's killing me. It's <laughs> killing me. This computer is killing me. The internet I, connection is I killing me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's do it together, guys. Vaya, ahora dictenme ustedes, all right? Oh, it's too little. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, to be very sick. Mm -hmm. Remember? Asic, as Excellent, Carlos, uh, Carlos Ernesto. As sick as a dog. All right, to relax or to rest? Take easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Mm -hmm. Number four, not feeling well. Under the weather too. All right, to be under the weather. Vale, ese tú no, no es parte de la, de la frase, ¿ok? Uh, podemos decir, I feel under the weather, I, I am under the weather, ¿ok? I'm feeling, o sea, podemos conjugar el verbo que está en ese idioma, ¿ok? Siempre se puede conjugar. 
depending on what you want to say, all right? Or the time that this is happening. All right. Pero ese tú, ese solo lo usó el, el jefe de, eh, se me olvidó el nombre, Dania, no, don't remember. Uh, Sonia, no, I don't remember the, the person in the conversation. Para decir que él también, también se sentía mal, ¿verdad? O no se sentía bien. Entonces, en la verdadera expresión, no ponemos to, ¿ok? Solo es to be under the weather. All right. In great condition? Tip top check. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Number six, don't have time to. Can afford. Mm -hmm. Can afford. Ahí sí le ponemos el to porque ese to no es para, mmm, no, no está, nos está indicando eh, la siguiente parte o la dirección o de, lo que no puede, ¿verdad? Eh, eh, darse el lujo de, ¿verdad? Ese de de nosotros en español, ese es el to que está ahí. ¿Ok? Can for to. All right. A ver, number seven. There, there, there is something going around. around. All right. Thank you. Number eight. Calling sick. Yes. Okay, now you can add all these idioms to your vocabulary and use them, all right? Use them, give them a meaning from yourself, right? And your own experiences, all right? Okay, people, so now let me introduce the class for tonight. In tonight's class, we are, we are, doing something interesting. We are adding some more vocabulary to our vocabulary, okay? And let me go ahead. Let's remember that we are in unit three and unit three is about troubleshooting. Remember, troubleshooting. And troubleshooting is to fix or repair something in our own, right? By ourselves. So let's come over here and this is your video conference number 14. By the way, guys, what date is it today? Uh, Tuesday, eleven of the October twenty twenty two. All right, vamos a verlo desde el principio. Arreglémoslo para que lo digamos bien. Vamos a ver. First, we say the day, right? The day is Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, and then we say the month, right? What month are we in? October. All right. And what is the date or the number of the day? 11th. 11th, right? Remember at the end? Uh -huh. Then we can say just this, Tuesday, October the 11th, right? Or we can say it all together of 2022, right? That's the day. Tuesday, October the 11th of 2022 or 2022. Remember, day first, month next, and next, the date. 
Okay. Okay. So, the topic for tonight is how to use phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs. All right. This is very important for us. We are using some, we know some phrasal, phrasal verbs at, at the moment, but we want to be aware that sometimes when we add the second part of the phrasal verb, the meaning is completely different. It changes the meaning maybe completely or slightly, right? But we have to be aware of that. What is the objective? That precisely what I was saying, right? We need to know how to use phrasal verbs in context, in context. Usually the phrasal verbs express, um, I mean, some idiomatic meanings, all right? Some phrases from their culture. Maybe they come from, um, uh, um, they come from experiences from an English person that happened through that. And then it gets the meaning, all right? Tienen prácticamente su historia, cada uno de donde proviene, cómo se inventaron decir eso, okay? Pero usualmente o oh, la forma gramatical es lo que a nosotros nos interesa por el momento, ¿verdad? Estamos todavía identificándolos. Identifying what phrasal verbs are, all right? So the agenda for tonight is easy. We had the written exercises from our manual. We uh, checked the topic, we checked the objective, and now, we are going to talk about the phrasal verbs in a short briefing, all right? Then we have to role play a conversation that we have on page 35. And we want to go through this written exercise on page 36, all right? Then we have in the breakout rooms, the activity of the role, I mean, the role play. And also you have to create your own conversation using your own phrasal verbs, all right? And the session one, uh, one on one is available. All right. So let's start. Let's start. Let's get started with the phrasal verbs. Mm -hmm. uh, Ustedes conocen que son los phrasal verbs? Do you know what phrasal verbs are? Okay, I will tell you. Mm. For example, okay, I wake up at 5 a.m. every day. Mm, I wake up. Mm, that's a phrasal verb. All right. Mm -hmm. I look up the words in the dictionary. Mm, that's another phrasal verb. All right. Look up. Mm -hmm. Give up. All right, never give up, Magdiel. Never give never up. Never give up. All right. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Another phrasal verb. All right. Now, do you know what phrasal verb are, verbs are? Do you know? Uh, for example, hurry up. Hurry up. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting that these verbs have two parts, all right? Uh, these verbs are compound verbs. They have a verb and they have a preposition, okay? The preposition gives or adds the meaning for that verb. But this is the situation and this is the tri tricky part that we say a particle, a particle, not exactly a preposition, because if we, if we have a preposition as they function, 
then they give the same meaning as the verb have, I mean, as the verb has. So we have to be careful with this, all right? And we are going to see that we have these phrasal verbs compound by the verb and the particle that we know as preposition, but sometimes they don't act as a preposition, all right? Sometimes they don't act as a preposition, uh, but they give us a meaning, all right? The prepositions or um, that's the ideal for us that are learning, all right? We are still learning. Entonces, bien, voy a decir esto en español. Ahorita nosotros podemos decir, ah, sí, pero ¿cuándo y cómo y por qué? All right. First, let's identify them. All right. Primero, paso a paso, identifiquémoslos. Okay. So, let's identify that they have two parts. Mm -hmm. The verb part or the action part. And also a particle that maybe doesn't act as a preposition, but it is a preposition, all right? So for example, we have the verb wake up, wake up, seize up, seize up, all right? Look up, look up, tighten up, tighten up, come up, come up, come up. Go up, go up, clean up, clean up. All right, this is only one preposition. We have at least 100 and more prepositions. But we want to know the most common, all right? Vamos a ir conociendo los más comunes. Okay, now we know it have, I mean, they have two parts, verb part, preposition part, all right. Vamos a ver los que tienen solo dos partes, porque hay otros que tienen tres partes, ¿ok? Ahorita vamos a irnos con los que tienen el verbo y la preposición o la palabra que actúa, que no exactamente actúa como una preposición, pero eh, escrita es una preposición, ¿ok? All right. Normally, this word add the meaning, all right? Normally. This word add a meaning, yeah. But sometimes this just change completely the meaning, all right? So that's what we want to uh, look up in the dictionary, right? To make sure that we are saying the correct words, all right? Um, <clears throat> then we have, for example, Mm -hmm. Sorry, what, Tell is me? The mean, what is the meaning that says so? Seize. Seize up, mm, arruinarse, oh. estropearse, right? Mm -hmm. Seize up. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, there is this other situation, and this is a very good way to add vocabulary to our vocabulary. All right. We have a verb that with different prepositions or adverbs, right? Or adverbs, uh, they get another meaning, all right? For example, I could say, get in, get in, right? Get in, right? Get in the box, get in the car, get in doors, <laughs> get in, right? Como Moverse hacia adentro, right? Now, we have get on, get on, right? Get on. It's not that you are going to put yourself on something or on the top of something, but get on is as if you are just um, understanding something, right? Understand, Understanding something. Then we have get over, get over, right? Get over is coming up. I mean, um, you have an obstacle and then you go through or you just got over, right? Lo superó, right? Got over or get over. Mm -hmm. Or forget also it's get over, right? Get up. What is get up? Do you know what that verb is? Get up. 
and you use it. I get up every day at 7 a.m. Ah, all right, so that is, yes, to stand up from bed, right? To stand up from bed, that's get up. All right, get around, get around. It has a completely different meaning, right? Get around, it means that um, you are seeing or going to different sites, right? Going to different sites or places, right? And idiomatic, it has another sense to uh, respect people who likes to get along with a lot of other um, mates, right? Uh, but in a sexual, in a sexual um, sense too, right? In a different, that's an idiomatic thing, but get around is going to different sites or places. Get to, get to, get to, it gives another meaning, right? Get to, it's like, um, go to, <laughs> yeah. Go to, it's mean going uh, forward, right? Get to. Get into, get into means mm -hmm. get into getting interested in something or maybe starting to do something that's getting into or get into. Uh, get off, get off. For example, if you go by bus, then you get off the bus in the bus stop, right? At the bus stop, you get off the bus. Ahí me quedo, dice, get off, right? You got off the bus, okay? Get through, get through, mm, another, right? Get through is to understand also. Uh, get through is mm, accomplishing something, mm, an activity in a process, right? And you are completing the process of something, then that's get through something. So. This is the situation. We have a verb and we can combine it, combine this verb with a preposition and it becomes a phrasal verb, right? Um, but there are other things that we want to consider, okay? There are some verbs that are transitive, transitive. And we have the intransitive verbs, all right? Then we have phrasal verbs that are transitive and verbs that are intransitive. What is OD? What is OD? It's a direct object, right? Direct object. So it means that the transitive verbs have a direct object and transitive verbs don't have a direct object. Do you remember what direct object is? ¿Se acuerdan que es un objeto directo? Es el nombre que acompaña al verbo o que modifica la acción del verbo. ¿Cómo recibe la acción del verbo? Por ejemplo, podríamos decir, mm, I eat mm, ham and cheese, right? Ham and cheese. Ham and cheese is the direct object. It goes after the verb and modifies the verb, right? Um, or the action of the verb, right? The direct object usually is a noun, usually is a noun. It can be a phrase too. For example, those phrases like what I think is, okay, that's a noun phrase. It can be as an, uh, it can act as an object, I mean, a direct object. I'm sorry, guys. All right. Those clauses, remember the clauses? Noun clauses can be a direct object too, right? Don't expect to have only one word. Maybe you can find out that the direct object has a long phrase, all right? Why do we need to know this? Uh, because 
this make the phrasal verbs separable and inseparable, all right? What is this teacher? Mm, we can split up in two parts, yeah? We can divide this in different positions and adding the pronoun or the direct object right between the verb and the preposition, all right? So those are separable, separable. The separable, it's usually when we have a direct object, all right? When we have a transitive verb. Normally, they're separable. Then we have the inseparable, okay? Usually, they are the intransitive. They don't have direct object, all right? So it's when we cannot separate the verb and it goes together, the verb and the preposition. So let's look at this. This is an example. We have other verbs that are either separable and inseparable at the same time. They can be both, all right? Usually they have direct object, right? So we have separable, I'm sorry, separable and separable, and others can be both separable and inseparable. So let's look at these examples. Turn on. This is the verb. This is the phrasal verb, right? Okay. Is it separable? Mm, let's look at if it has a direct object. All right. Yes. The lights. That's the direct object. It goes right after the verb. All right. So turn on the lights. It can be separated and it can be together, all right? So we can say, turn on the lights and we can either say, turn the lights on, all right? Turn the lights on. Now we have those that are inseparable. They have a different meaning if you separate them, all right? So look at this, I'll catch up with you later. Just give me one second, I will enlarge this a little bit. Okay, we have this example. I'll catch up with you later. All right, si yo separo este verbo y pongo with you later en medio de catch up, a ver, tratemos de decirlo. I'll catch with you later up. Mm, it I'll doesn't catch. sound good, right? Ahí no suena bien. ¿Por qué? Porque le cambia totalmente el significado. Es incorrecto. Y no tiene sentido en algunos casos. Es como que yo aquí esté diciendo, si yo pongo with you later en medio de catch up, yo diría, I'll, mm, yo te cacharé. Con, yo cacharé contigo después allá arriba. It doesn't have the, the real meaning, all right? The real meaning here is uh, to update, all right? To put the same, I mean, to put yourself or your mind at the same level of knowledge that the other person has. So that's good job. That's good job. I cannot separate that verb, all right? And there is no, there is no direct object here, okay? Como no hay un objeto directo, nos da como la idea de que no se puede separar, okay? Are we okay so far? I have a question, teacher. Tell me. Um, I would like to uh, feedback um, when you said um, the first verbs with up. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you combine uh, the verbs uh -huh. with up, mm -hmm. uh, the, the verb up, uh, it's a... Uh, mm, a preposition. A up. preposition, okay. Mm -hmm. 
It's a preposition. Okay, but... Mm -hmm. Then I but, said it is a particle. Okay, mm -hmm. but, when, but now in this topic, when we are talking about separable and inseparable, and in, in the separable, we are talking about the, on the, the word on. The word on is a preposition too? Yes, it is a preposition, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, they are prepositions. They don't act as preposition, but they are. All right. Uh -huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. ¿Por qué digo que no, no son exactamente una preposición? Ah, porque si fuera una preposición, entonces nos diera la dirección que esa preposición está indicando. En algunos casos, sí. En algunos casos, sí. Por ejemplo, si yo digo, look up the roof. Ah, ¿Estoy diciéndole un phrasal verb exactly? Not exactly. Pero parece. ¿Por qué? Porque le estoy diciendo, mire para arriba, hacia el techo, ¿verdad? Ok. Look up. Estoy diciéndole, mire hacia arriba. Up as a preposition that means that direction, right? Going up. Pero en este caso, up le da un significado... Eh, ligeramente diferente o cambia completamente el significado, ¿ok? Eh, lo mejor para aprender estos es irlos recordando así como vamos recordando todos los otros verbos, ¿ok? Porque a veces tienen un significado que en nuestra cultura no suenan, no suenan as, así como fácil de asociar, ¿verdad? Entonces, por eso su diccionario tiene que ser su aliado ahorita. Okay. Yeah. So going back with these verbs, as I said, it's a particle, right? We could say it's a preposition. Yes, it is because it's up, right? In some verbs, it means that direction, but in some phrasal verbs, it doesn't mean the same. Then, for example, these up es como finaliza arruinándose. Okay, seize up. It's seized up. Oh, se arruinó, pero así vea. Completo, se arruinó. Now, let's say look up. Look up is to search something. All right. Look up is, for example, if you go to Google and search anything, right? So you are looking that anything or that something up. All right. Uh, tighten up, tighten up. Uh, this tighten is like apretar, right? So we, if we tighten up something is that we are doing this completely and in a very well form. I mean, it has to be tighten up, right? It's like casa. a superlative. Uh, a su superlative, uh, no, not exactly. But similar. Mm -hmm. No, the meaning is completely finished, right? Completely finished. Es uno de los significados de up en este caso para algunos verbos. Not for all of them. Not for all of them. For example, if I say go up, go up, go up, para mí es, o oh, para nosotros, ¿verdad? Es váyase para arriba. Yeah? Go up. Uh, pero go up. También puede significar um, uh, going up, uh, así como um, thinking, pensando. Uh, for example, let, let me think about an example. Uh, I'm going up on something. Straight on up? Something. Okay, that's another verb, straight up, straight up. Yeah, straight up is to put it in the, I mean, horizontal or in the right way, right? So that's straight up, uh, put it correctly. That's different, completely different verb. Um, go up for me, it's more giving a direction where this thing is going, right? Now, clean up, clean up. It means that disorder is down and you have to clean the toys up. Not exactly, not exactly. You are cleaning up everything. All right, you are cleaning up everything. 
and you have everything tied up, all right? Tiene todo ordenado, right? Clean up is limpiar completamente, okay? So, ahora, nosotros podemos seguir usando los verbos eh, wake, I mean, wake up, no, no podríamos, pero seize, sí, podríamos usar solo seize, podríamos usar solo look, right? Look for, en vez de look up, uh, el que conocemos como buscar, ¿verdad? Uh, podríamos usar solo tighten, and it's good. Podríamos usar solo calm, and it's good. Pero ¿por qué se usan los phrasal verbs? Why do we use phrasal verbs? Because that is the way that the native speakers give a most, the most exact meaning for that action, all right? The closer meaning or the closest meaning for that action, okay? And sometimes it gives a completely different meaning, all right? Like idiomatic as I was saying. All right, at the moment, is there any other question? Yes, teacher, but the coral. All right, but we are going to do something, all right? Mm -hmm. Just allow me to go over here. Okay, nos vamos a tirar al agua. Okay, we are just jump right now jumping into, right? Into this. Just give me one second because is this still loading? Teacher is attendance time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Karen. Just give me one moment and let me go through this. There we go. Okay, I will send, I will send this um, link so you can have it handy and you will start learning which verbs are transitive and which verbs are intransitive, all right? And also I will send another link where you can see or check what verbs are separable and what verbs are inseparable, all right? This is for us to um, use them as a tool, all right? A language tool. Okay, this is the first link I'll give you. And it's a list of verbs. All right, this is a list of verbs, transitive and intransitive, all right, for you to visualize them. Teacher. Tell me one. Roll call, teacher. Yes. Thank you. All right, I think here we are. Andrea Sofía Benítez Gómez. Blanca Alejandra Portillo Bermúdez. Present teacher. Carlos Ernesto Pérez. Present teacher. Carlos Roberto Alemán Prudencio. Present teacher. All right, you're home now. Good. Uh, Claudia Yamilet Coreas. Present teacher. Ellen Nilsson Aparicio del Cid. All right, there you are, Ellen Nilsson. Eric Jose Hernandez Campos. Hazel Elizabeth Navarro de Cervellón. Henry Alberto Pérez Rosales. Here Herman am, Antonio Chacón López. Present teacher. Okay, Juan Francisco Salmerón Alas. Present teacher. Karen Chamilet Rivas de Ayala. 
Present teacher. Magdiel Esaú García Morales. Present teacher. Rafael Alexander Serna Díaz. Present teacher. Rafael Antonio Barrera Díaz. Present teacher. Ricardo Tony Mendoza Castro. Rosa del Carmen Santa María Tobar. Wilber Alberto Pérez Méndez. Present teacher. José Abel Isaguirre Mendoza. Present teacher. Pedro Alexander Osorto Sánchez. Present teacher. Okay. So allow me to send the other link. Teacher. Tell me. Rosan Hazel, present in chat. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, in this link, you will find the separable and the inseparable verb, verbs, all right? And these are, uh, these two lists are like a guide, all right? Like a guide, there you are. It's a quite advanced list, all right? So you can find a lot of verbs over there to guide yourselves, right? And you have some examples there. So now just allow me to go over here. And now, this is the other link I want you to check. It's an exercise for you to, I mean, in, for you individually to this understanding, all right? It's really interesting. So now here it is. Yeah, teacher. Mm -hmm. It's in interesting. Yes, it is. Okay, uh, I sent the link already through this chat and Zoom. So please click on it and let's go to do this exercise. All right. We're going to see if those verbs are separable or inseparable, all right? Separable or inseparable. So you have to check which sentence is correct, all right? Which sentence is correct. Remember that there are some verbs that are both. They can be separable and inseparable too, all right? So go ahead. When you finish, please um, take your screenshot and send it through the WhatsApp group, all right?
Thank you, Juan, for sending the link through the WhatsApp. How's it going, guys? Go ahead. Finish? Not yet, teacher. Not yet, all right. All right. So in in that exercise, uh, what are the phrasal verbs that are inseparable? Inseparable. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> On the chat, I will write. Okay, get on, get on. Uh -huh. You cannot say get the bus on, right? Uh -huh. Get the bus, the bus on. You cannot put the bus on you, right? So you have to get on the bus, right? You cannot separate because it's going to give a different meaning, all right? Okay, Abel, uh, did you get the link, Abel? Yes, ahorita lo voy a repetir porque me okay. fue todo. Ok, no problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Get on is inseparable, right? Mm -hmm. Grow up, inseparable, right? Inseparable. You can say grow yourself up. Mm -mm. No, not exactly, right? Grow up, grew up, all right? In. Mm -hmm. And then we say the place or myself or mm, by myself, different, all right? Different completely. All right, what was the other? Oh, check in and check out from the hotel, for example. We cannot separate that. So check in and check out, not separable. So 
inseparable. Uh -huh. Ah, look after, look after. Uh -huh. Yeah, inseparable completely. Why? Because we cannot say, for example, the, the sentence we have there, Dennis looked after his brother, right? We can say his brother after, look his brother after. After what? It, it's something missing, right? So doesn't make sense. We cannot separate look after, all right? Is there any question so far about the exercise? Questions? What is this about? This is about practice, all right? This is about practice. So let's go and practice this conversation and we are going to see how these phrasal verbs work. All right, so let's go to our manuals and um, yeah, there is a conversation on page 35. Let's do that. Here it is. Dave and Tom, right? Tom, I need your help. Can you pass me the spanner, please? Oh, I forgot this thing. All right, I will start over. David says, Tom, I need your help. Can you pass me the spanner, please? I need to tighten up this screw. Sure, here you go. Thanks a lot. Look, did he clean up the room before he left? Yes, he did. I know he did because I asked him to switch off the power. Great. By the way, did you call up the electrician? The engine doesn't stop to turn off. And now we have a problem. Yeah, I think that if you don't oil it regularly, it will seize up eventually. That's correct. All right, I will do it again. Tom, I need your help. Can you pass me the spanner, please? I need to tighten up this screw. Sure, here you go. Thanks a lot. Look, did he clean up the room before he left? Yes, he did. I know he did because I asked him to switch off the power. Great. By the way, did you call up the electrician? The engine doesn't stop to turn off. And now we have a problem. Yeah, I think that if you don't oil it regularly, it will seize up eventually. That's correct. All right, guys. Take 30 seconds to read, but please, I need to see your lips moving on, all right? Move your lips.
is there any word that it's difficult for you to pronounce? Tighten, tighten up, teacher. Tighten, yes. Tighten up. Mm -hmm. Tighten. Mm -hmm. Tighten up. Tighten up. Is there any other? Are we okay with the vocabulary in this conversation? Teacher? Tell me. What do you mean spanners? Uh, this is a tool to tie things up. It's a very long thing with a head like it's like a duck or something. <laughs> Como, si, la llave de tuerca o la llave de, ¿cómo se llama la otra llave? Pero es una llave, right? Something to tighten up. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. This screw, this screw is like a tornillo, right? Something like that, screw. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there any other question? Okay. In done. Spanner, sorry teacher, in Spanner? Spanner. Spanner era una llave para apretar cosas tuercas o Tornillos, cosas así. Uh -huh. ¿Cómo se llaman esas llaves? A ver, los que aquí, todos los señores que me pueden decir cómo se llaman esas llaves en uh, uh, Spanish. Eh, acá, uh, uh, some kinds of wrench. Uh, wrenches. Right. Wrenches, all right, but. Uh, Fijas, uh, llaves fijas. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those that you can regulate, right? You can regulate others just to. Ah, este, ¿cómo que se llama? Cangrejas. Cangrejas. Yes, that's the word. That's the word I was looking for in my, looking up, right? <laughs> in my head, yes. Mm -hmm. Cangreja, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cangreja, thank you. Uh, pero también existe la llave inglesa, ¿verdad? Es la misma, la misma cangreja. Oh, ok, ok. Solo que uno es formal y el otro es salvadorian, right? All right, good. Ok, then, we want to listen to uh, Ellen Nilsson, please. You are Dave and Pedro, you are Tom. I don't know why, but I, I cannot listen to you. Can you listen, guys? Can you hear? There you are. Nope, not yet. No, I'm sorry, Ellen Nilsson. You have to check out over there what's going on. All right. No? Yes. Yes, there you are. Okay. Okay. Tom, I need your help. Can you pass me that spanner, please? I need to tighten up this screw. Sure, here you go. Thanks a lot. Look, did Kit clean up the room before he left? Yes, he did. I know he did because I asked him to switch out the power. Great. By the way, did you call up the electrician? The engine doesn't stop to turn off. And now we have a problem. Yeah, I think that if you don't oil it regularly, regularly, it will size up eventually. Eventually. That's correct. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. All right. 
we have these questions right here. They are only three. And uh, the first one says, what seems to be the problem? What kind of jobs do you think Dave and Tom have? Who is in charge of checking the machinery and equipment at your workplace? All right, we are going to the breakout rooms, practice the conversation, and also discuss these questions. Okay. How many listeners do I have tonight? We have Rosa, Jose Abel, and no, Jose Abel is okay, right? Are, are you available, Jose Abel, to participate? Yeah. All right. And who else, guys? Who else? Hazel, right? Hazel. All right. Let me check here. I will recreate this. Okay. Oh, Rosa too, right? Ah, I forgot. Mm -hmm. Okay, las voy a abrir y luego voy a terminar con la en la que está Rosa para mandar a alguien ahí, okay? Helen Nilsson, please join your room. Ricardo, please join. Juan Francisco, please join your room. Hello, Hello, teacher. Puede enviarme nuevamente. Estaba en la sala nueve, pero cuando ingresé a, al libro me sacó. It's okay. Ah, uh, hey, there you are.
boy is regularly, it will size out eventually. Eventually. That's correct. Otra vez. Demos de nuevo. Tom, I need to help. Can you pass me that spanner, please? I need to tighten that this script. Sure, here you come. Thanks a lot. Look, did it clean up the room before he left? Yes, it did. I know it did because I asked him to switch off the power. Great. By the way, did you call up uh, the electrician? The, the engine doesn't start to turn off and not we have a problem. Yeah, I think that if you turn oil it regularly, it will size up eventually. That's correct. Okay. Eh, seguimos practicando o respondemos las preguntas. Si queremos una vez más, para que luego respondemos. Ok. Eh, Tom, I need to help. Can you pass me that spanner, please? I need to tighten up the screw. This screw. So, here you go. Thanks a lot. Look. Did he clean up the room before he left? He left. Yes, he did. I know he did because I asked him to switch off the power. Right. Hi. Hi, teacher. We have a problem. Tell me. Andrea has problem with her connection. Oh, all right. So uh, allow me to send you to another group. All right. Uh, for you to practice. Okay. But Andrea? Ella puso aquí en los mensajes para mí que, que, se, que se va a desconectar de la sala 4 porque no puede. Dice que perdió el audio. Okay. Yeah, something's happening with the version, right? All right. I'll send you to, let me check because we have other with the same problem. All right. So just give me one second, Karen. Here uh -huh. Yes, Andrea is out now. She logged out. Mm -hmm. I will send you to room one, Karen, all right? Hello, Andrea. I'm sorry, I sent you to room five. Try, please, joining. Are you there, Andrea? Work in maintenance. Quien se who is charge of checking the machinery? No. They. But it says in your workplace. Hola. Read number three again. 
who is in charge of checking the machinery and equipment at, uh, and equipment your... At, your, uh, at your workplace yes. sorry mm -hmm. ¿Quién es el encargado? How do you say eh, departamento de flota? Uh, float, uh, fleet sería, ¿verdad? Fleet uh, department. Fleet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just uh, let me confirm it. Mm -hmm. ¿Voy a alguna otra palabra que haga referencia a, a gente encargada de vehículos? Uh, Yes, the transportation people. Uh, no, because they are the drivers. Uh -huh, they are the drivers. All right, the mechanics or something. Uh, just one second. Yeah, the fleet department, fleet. It is F-L-E-E-T. Repeat me, please. F-L-E-E-T. Fleet department. Mm -hmm. This is correct. One second. Let, let me see. No, no. Fleet. F L E E T. E E T double E double mm -hmm. yeah ah okay Please. yes yes mm -hmm. this is next What about at your workplace, Carlos Roberto? Yeah, I don't understand the chart. Uh, who is in charge of repairing or giving the maintenance of the machinery and equipment in your uh, workplace? In my workplace. Yes. Uh, I, 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 I think the sentence is about uh, the... The, the conversation. <laughs> I, I don't know. All right. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, the conversation. Sorry. <laughs> okay. In my case. But... Uh-huh. I am I am in charge of the of the maintenance. Ah, the maintenance. All right. My maintenance. Yeah, mm -hmm. I am because uh, there is only the maintenance of the computers. Computers. Uh, All right. Good. So Carlos Roberto is. And what's your job position? Uh, my job position is a, a computer professor. All right. Teacher, computer. All um, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's mm -hmm. a plus. Uh, it, it, it maintains maintenance of the computer. All right. Mm -hmm. Good. And Henry, ask Juan Francisco too. Jean Francis, can you hear me? John Francis. Francisco, are you there? We need you to participate at least today. He's making a coffee. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Maybe he's not in his lunch time yet. All right. Okay, no problem. Continue, guys. Continue. Mm -hmm. I'll go to another group, another room. Okay. All right. Hello, Tony. I see you're having trouble, right? With your, with your connection. I think it's not the connection, Ricardo. Hey, Tony. Super strange, I tried to. <laughs> Uh, maybe it's not the connection. Maybe it's the version that you have in your device. Is it that you, you told me that it's an iPad, right? Yeah. 
So you have to, I don't know if you have tried, but you have to uninstall and then install it again. Yes. Okay. Well, tonight, uh, tonight I will try, but uh, yes. the tablet is new and then I, I download the last uh, version. Ah. And, and I find I don't know what happened. Oh, okay. Well, what you can do is go to the yes. Play Store also and try updating, maybe. Right, maybe. I try, mm -hmm. I try, I or, or you can connect not from the app and connect from the web. All right, connect from the web. And maybe it's going to work better. Mm -hmm. Tal vez si no lo usa right. como la aplicación, right. sino que se vaya por la web, allá por Zoom. Zoom, uh, sería zoom.us. Ahí y se mete con yeah. el meeting ID. Mm -hmm. Actually, actually, uh, in this form, I, I, I am sorry. Oh, okay, okay. It shouldn't uh, be a problem with it, but all right, <laughs> it's giving this I, trouble, I right? Try. Okay, please, please do, please do. Okay, no problem. The thing is that I'm about calling everybody back, all right? All right. Okay. Okay, I see everyone here. All right, here, still coming back. Okay, my dear class, we are going to give the last try, the last role play all right and we want to listen to we want to listen to Hernan okay and Rafael please now here we go okay uh, you were working together, right? Okay, comienza entonces. Okay. Stone, I need your help. Can you pass me the spanner, please? I need to tighten, tighten up the screen. Sure. Here you go. Say hello. Look, the kid clean up the room before he left. Yes, he did. I know he did because I asked him to switch on the power. Ray, by the way, did you call up, call up the electrician? The engine doesn't stop to turn off and now we have a problem. Yeah, I think. That if you don't oil in regularly, it will size up eventually. That's correct. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much. Okay, people. Let's listen to Carlos Roberto. What did you say about number one and your group? Yeah, teacher. Um, and the problem seen is, mm -hmm. sorry, mm -hmm. uh, the the engine doesn't stop 
to turn off. Okay. The engine, engine, all right, the engine. That is why we say engineer, right? Because this is engine, all right, good. Mm -hmm. Number two, number two, Magdiel. What is the answer for number two? I think um, they are um, in charge of the machinery. Okay. Do you think, um, I mean, both of them? Mm, yes. Okay, don't you think that one is the boss and the other is the employee? Mm -hmm. mm. The employee could be the operator machine. All right. Uh -huh. I could say that too, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the other one maybe is the engineer or maybe is the supervisor. What do you think? In charge. Uh -huh. So according, according to this conversation, we could say that they are machine operators. Is that correct? Uh -huh. Tom is, is the operator. Uh -huh. I think so. What do you think? I, something is happening with my computer. Tech support, it seems that my keyboard is not working properly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's look at this. Machine operator, right? Operator. Mm -hmm. That could be Tom, right? Uh -huh. yeah. And what about Dave? Mm -hmm. Dave could be a supervisor. Okay. Uh -huh. And Dave is the supervisor. Yes. Or he could be the engineer, right? He could be the engineer. Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you think, guys? Any other opinion about this number two? No. Oh, they could be uh, mechanics. They could be mechanics, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mechanics, both, right? Both could be mechanics. All right. What about number three? Let's listen to Carlos Ernesto. Who is in charge of checking the machinery and equipment at your workplace? Um, we we think that um, keep, keep is in charge of checking the machinery and equipment. Oh, in this company, Kit. Uh, yes. But he's the technician, right? He's the technician. So maybe it's te technical support or yeah, technical support or maintenance department, right? Or something like that. But what about your workplace? Okay. Mm -hmm. in, in my case, and um, um, we don't, don't need um, machinery. Uh, okay. Maybe no machinery, but maybe equipment. Yes, and, uh -huh. and, and the the, the uh, technician uh, uh, informatic. Okay, IT, IT. IT. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is, um, yeah, technology, right? Technology. 
Yes. IT, technical support, or yes, informatic. All right, very good. And something very interesting is that Carlos Roberto is in charge of the maintenance of some equipment in his job. Interesting, he's got that job position, Carlos Roberto. And is there any other one here who works in a maintenance department? Maintenance, no? Okay, Henry, Henry, tell me who is in charge of checking the machinery and equipment at your workplace? In my workplace is a fleet departments are charge of maintenance of, a, of cars. Very good, From I mean, of cars, good, thank you. What about in your workplace, Ellen Nilsson? Who is in they, charge? They are the mechanics. All right, the mechanics. Good. Mechanics. Good. I forgot letter N. Good. The mechanics. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, people. So now we have the idea how to use the phrasal verbs in a conversation. Usually when we do troubleshooting or when we troubleshoot, we use this. What kind of maintenance do you have in your company, guys? What kind of maintenance do you have in your company? Do you have a preventive maintenance? Do you have a preventive uh, maintenance? Preventive ma maintenance? Preventive or on the road? <laughs> or a fixing maintenance? We have both features. All right. Preventive and correct. Okay. Corrective, corrective. good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the thing when people work in maintenance and they do troubleshooting or they repair or fix things up, they use a lot of these kind of actions, phrasal verbs, phrasal verbs. All right, now, uh, it's only one minute to 10 guys. It's only one minute to 10. So I think time is over, time is over. Mm -hmm. Okay, just let read this just to finish. Okay, here we have some other verbs. For example, take after, take after. He takes after his father. It means they are like, all right? They are like. Uh, he looks like his father or he behaves like his father. That's the meaning of take after. Call off, finishing something, canceling something, right? Canceling whatever. For example, Mary called off the meeting. Mary canceled the meeting. Either you use these verb or you use these other verb, you are correct, okay? De cualquier modo, usted usa el phrasal verb, que sería lo mejor irlo agregando en nuestro vocabulario para estar más cercano al significado, ¿verdad? O puede seguir usando hasta que maneje, ¿verdad? Eh, los phrasal verbs, seguir usando el significado literal, ¿verdad? Que sería canceled, behaves, looks, ¿ok? But the a phrasal verb to use will be take after or call off, all right? So let's do a short summary. Phrasal verbs are compound of two parts, verb and the preposition. The preposition add a different meaning to the verb, all right? So is there any question or so far so good? 
So far, so good. Okay. Okay. Teacher, I, I have a question. <laughs> right, tell me. Uh, I was talking with Edenison uh, with a, a word. I don't know if, if it is a preposition to uh, the word out. Yes, it is. Uh, okay. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, I didn't saw it in the list, on the list. Uh, that was my question. Oh, okay. Uh huh. Because I uh, in the in the book on the book we uh, we read the, the the word figure without figure out. Oh, figure it out. Yes. Figure it out. Okay. That's yes. that's another phrasal verb. Figure out. Figure mm -hmm. out. Find out. Think mm -hmm. about. Yes. Mm -hmm. Out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh. I mean, phrasal verbs are also compound with adverbs, okay? Not only with prepositions, but with adverbs. That's what we need to make the difference between those. But at the moment, to speak, you just say it, right? You just say it. Don't worry and look up or uh, recall the meaning, the meaning of both words together. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there any other question? Bye. Entonces le voy a hacer una pregunta. ¿Qué tal van con la plataforma? A ver, cuéntenme por cuál van ya. Ya terminaron, vea, ya hicieron hasta el final, creo yo. I finished. <laughs> yes. Ajá. Hay algunos que sí, fíjense. Ya llegaron al final exam. Por favor, aprovechen todo el tiempo que puedan, que tengan libre para practicar. Tal vez no hemos visto algún tema, pero igual les va dando la idea, ¿verdad? Y ya después cuando vemos la clase, ya ustedes corrigen en la que estábamos mal, ¿verdad? En la que estaban mal. Bien, uh, necesito que trabajen en eso. Hoy, en, en estos últimos días, han descansado de que no les he puesto actividad, ¿verdad? En las discusiones. Uh, pero no se preocupen que ya vamos a comenzar nuevamente con las actividades, ¿verdad? Para discutir. Ok, vamos entonces a pasar la lista, please. Uh, get ready. Turn your cameras on and say present. Andrea Sofía Benítez Gómez. Present teacher. Blanca Alejandra Portillo Bermúdez. Present teacher. Carlos Ernesto Pérez. Present teacher. Carlos Roberto Alemán Prudencio. Present teacher. Claudia Yamilet Coreas. Present teacher. Elenilson Aparicio del Cid. Present teacher. Eric José Hernández Campos. Hazel Elizabeth Navarro de Cervellón. Henry Alberto Pérez Rosales. Here I am, teacher. Hernán Antonio Chacón López. Present, teacher. Juan Francisco Salmerón Alas. Karen Yamilet Present, Rivas teacher. de Ayala. Present, teacher. Magdiel Esau García Morales. Present, teacher. I'm Rafael here. Alexander Serma Díaz. Present, teacher. Rafael Antonio Barrera Díaz. Present, teacher. Ricardo Tony Mendoza Castro. Present, teacher. Rosa del Carmen Santa María Tobar. Present teacher. All right. Wilber Alberto Perez Mendez. Present teacher. Jose Abel Isaguirre Mendoza. Here I am, teacher. Pedro Alexander Osorto Sanchez. Present teacher. Okay. No more questions, right? Bien. Entonces, session one on one tonight was scheduled for today is the 14th, right? Era para Magdiel, pero Magdiel se ha quedado. No importa, ¿verdad? Pero el que sigue en la lista es Rafael. Rafael, ¿cuál de los dos, verdad? Alexander. Rafael Alexander. I don't know if you want to stay. Uh, no, teacher. Ok. De ahí tengo Rafael Antonio. I don't know if you want to stay. Teacher. 
Tell me, Magdiel. Yo, yo escuché que alguien le reservó para ahora. Es cierto, alguien dijo, es cierto, es cierto. Thank you, Magdiel. Uh, era... No, no ¿Quién fue? Ya les voy a decir, ya les Fisher. digo. Era... Creo que era Carlos Roberto. Oh, sí, cierto. Hey, thank you. Right. Carlos Roberto, ¿siempre se quiere quedar el día de hoy? Yes, teacher. Bingo. Ok. Why didn't you say that before? Oh, my God. Mira, aquí tenga confianza, ¿verdad? ¿Sabe yeah. quién, ¿Quién decía así? Mi abuelita. Aquí tenga confianza, tata, si ahí está el rimero de tortillas, decía. Mm. I am, I am the one and one, teacher. The past. I'm sorry? I am the one and one in the past. I am finished. All right, uh, let me understand this correctly. Uh, you have? Yeah. In the past, in the past. Oh, yes, you did. Yeah. Okay, you had your session one on one in the past. Oh, thank you very much. You did it already. All right, no problem. Okay, Carlos Roberto, it's your turn. So, everybody, have a very good night. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. See, you. See you tomorrow. See you, do your homework. Bye -bye. Good night. Do your homework. See you tomorrow, teacher. Bye bye, my dear. See you. Bye bye, teacher. Take care. Teacher, may I share my screen? Yes, you may. Go ahead, please. Thanks. Okay. Uh, no se va a asustar si vea cosas de películas de terror porque estoy, porque estoy en un tema y me he preparado. All right. A ver, cuénteme, tell me. Fíjense que tengo problemas con ciertas... No, no, no me funciona. No, no, sé, no sé por qué cuando intento a veces uh -huh. dar por clic así al enlace, uh -huh. me dice eso, que solo, soy, que solo estoy por invitación y después lo... Lo, lo, lo arregla. Lo refresco. Ajá, y, y queda... Ah. O sea, yo sé, yo, sé, yo sé que ya estoy logueado, pero Ajá. Bueno, se, se, se deslogueó. Me imagino que ah. pasé varios días. Sin... Ok. Es que fíjese que tengo problemas con, creo que la número... No, no recuerdo, pero ahí la he dejado. Uh -huh. Sé que no, no la he hecho. No, no es este, espérame. Uh -huh. mm. No estoy seguro dónde estaba. Creo que es la no, número 8, es. ¿verdad? Porque es la que les ha dado bastante problemas a todos. Sí, con, con la, el escribir, la, este es cabal, aquí está, aquí hay uno, porque son okay. dos. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Entonces, no, no sé qué estoy escribiendo mal. All right, ajá. Uh -huh. Vaya, recordemos que primero va el sujeto. Ok. People. Yes, subject. Uh -huh. Subject. Uh -huh. People. Uh -huh. People is uh -huh. plural. Uh -huh. Is it plural or is it singular? Is singular. No, it's plural. Uh, no, because there are. Uh -huh. no, it's plural. Yes, all right. People are. Uh -huh. Are. Y ahora no, la frase, exactly. Slow. Mm -hmm. Slow. Ahora, el to, después, porque la frase es are not allowed to. Ah, ok. Mm -hmm. To check in. Yes. Check mm -hmm. in late. Yes. They have to be okay. correct. Mm -hmm. May I? Uh, yes, you may. Ok. Ah, ok. Yay, so, you uh, did it. <laughs> Excellent. Ok, <laughs> now, you. remember, remember when we and scramble a sentence, we have to reorder this thing. So remember that the okay. subject is at the beginning, right? Subject, verb, and complement. In, in this case, subject is employees. Employees. Yes, um, correct. There are a plural, so is R. Uh, no, it's E-E-S. No. Remember? E-E-S. Uh, E-E-S. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, thanks. 
Mm -hmm. is plural, so it's are. Yes. Are not allowed. 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 Mm -hmm. Allowed. Smoke. Two. No, Two. allowed to. Smoke. Mm -hmm. Smoke. Yes. There you are. Okay. Yes, yeah, you did correct. it, Carlos. Excellent. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And the other is, mm -hmm. I don't remember what word is. No, it's correct. I think it's in the, in the middle. I mean, in the midterm he, test. Yeah. Oh, there he, you are. It is mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And number three. Mm -hmm. Is instructions. Read the sentence, find the mistake, and correct it. Uh, okay. Maybe, maybe there, uh, this is the one that it is mistaken, that the, the space is mistaken. And we need to write only R. There are, solo R. Escriba solo R. Just an R. Uh -huh. o sea, solo, solo R, not anything else. Dice R3. Ajá, de ahí borre todo lo four. demás, solo deje R. Es que este no, tiene, no. está en la programación, quedó ese volando ahí. Ajá. Y el no, otro no. también okay. tiene que ser... Uh, I is, no. Yes. Mm -hmm. Lo que no me is, is not. Mm -hmm. Is not. Creo que dice ahí. Uh -huh. No. Lo agarró? Okay. No, no agarró. Uh, okay. There are no. Ah, veamos si lo agarra con people. Que no recuerdo exacto el dato. Ahorita se lo uso. Ah, pero yo no estoy dentro ahorita. Lo cerré. Así. No, no, no. Sin is not, en vez de is not, busquemos people. Pongamos people. Pero sería peoble. Peoble. No. Eh, no, porque lo escribió mal. Tal vez sería e o. Peoble. Ah. Yeah. I'm sorry. A veces, I'm sorry. a veces. Uh -huh. Okay. There you are. Uh -huh. okay. Es que, que ahí el okay. programador se me durmió un poquito, pero. Sí, por ahí. Lo explicamos en una clase. Tal vez no alcanzó a ver esa parte usted. Yo creo que es que vi, vi que sí lo estaban diciendo y, y me di cuenta que ya lo estaban viendo, pero no comprendía cuando. O sea, no, Hasta no, no la hora de hacerlo, no. ¿verdad? Se da. Ajá, Exacto. Ya, yo dije, ah, ya esto era, dije yo, y no me fijé bien qué era. Yo creo que solo eso era el error realmente, porque el okay. examen ya lo he hecho y. Y sacó el si 100. No me equivoco, pues, ajá, veamos, tiene razón. Ok. Uh -huh. uh, sería 100 sobre 100 100 uh -huh. sobre 100 Ah, mi turn, yo creo que aquí tengo error Exacto no uh -huh. Pero mires en la parte 3 eh, No, creo que no La parte 3 Creo que es, bueno la 4, perdón Aquí uh -huh. está Yes, no, ahí okay. está Yo creo que aquí también le va a pasar exactamente Lo mismo que allá Aquí solo hay que poner el verbo The verb Uh, o el error, porque dice find a mistake and correct it. Entonces, Ajá. there is. Ajá. Is. Luego, there is one offices. Tendría que ser. Uh, no, no, no. No, sí, no. Tendría que ser office. Office. Ajá. Y en el otro, there is three. Tendría que ser R. Probémoslo así. No. Ajá. No, eso es. Yay, we did it. <laughs> yes. Now you get Voy a the... revisarlo. Yes, please, go ahead. 100, 100, 100. Good. 100, 100. Ah, va. Ahí sí. Nice. Puedo empezar ya la, la unidad yes. 3, 4. All right. Oh, Good. Perdón, vamos por la 3, vamos, ¿verdad? Yes, troubleshooting. Mm -hmm. 
por ahí vamos, okay. ahí tiene que entrarle con tiene todo. Entrarle Acuérdese con que todo. ahí Acuérdese. estamos viendo idioms, estamos viendo expressions en um, phrasal verbs. This is more cultural, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. okay. ok, eso estaba viendo con las oraciones de get y la otra no, no le tomé captura a la otra, solo le tomé a una. Ah, uh, ok, ok. Uh, de, esta, eh, de, ah, va, ahorita ah. se la pongo. So here it is. Ah, okay. Okay, I got it. Mm -hmm. And then the other, the, I don't know if you got the others, this one, and yes. this one. Okay. Yes, two. Good. Okay, done. I think we're finished, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, <laughs> no problem. Is there any other question you've got? Don't write on the, another question. No other question. Okay, no problem. Then I'm glad uh, that you could um, uh, solve this homework, all right? <laughs> I'm really glad. Okay, then, Carlos okay. Roberto, have a very good night. Remember to do your homework. <laughs> yes, teacher, good night. Okay, have a very good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.